Alrighty, so in today's video, we're gonna be doing a part two of my strategy for London session. Now, we're gonna extend on the last strategy that we talked about, and we're gonna talk about the Asian liquidity strategy. Now, this is not my strategy, it's ICT strategy that he talks about, um, but it's something that I've found great success with in terms of probability, and it's something really easy to start with, right? So, the Asian liquidity strategy, or looking for Asian session highs and lows, that's the first step, right? So. Whenever you're kind of trying to use this or you're looking for a framework, if you're just starting out, you wanna look for swing highs and lows between seven o'clock to 12 o'clock, right? So seven till 12. That's what you wanna look for. So what I like to do is, again, I'm starting in a one minute time frame. I'll mark out some of these swing highs here. Now, this swing high is at 728. This one is before seven, so that's the extremity. I like to mark out the extremities and that's the Asian buy site. And then I like to mark out the sell site. So 12 o'clock, that there's after 12 o'clock. So really what this kind of leads me to believe is that the Asian sell side's been taken out. So are there any imbalances that I wanna look for? So let me just move this there and let's fix this up a bit. So the Asian liquidity strategy, look for swing highs and lows between seven and 12. The second point, if there's no swing highs or lows, look for imbalances. Look for fair value gaps, look for order blocks, look for different PDRAs that price might wanna to return to. And even on the one minute time frame, right? You can see there's this massive imbalance here, like massive, which is quite, quite clear, right? And on a higher time frame, that would be a big imbalance too. So that gets my attention as well, right? That gets my attention there. There's this massive bullish imbalance. So essentially for this strategy, you're marking out any PD rates or any areas where the market's drawn to. We know the market only targets two things, liquidity at old highs and old lows, like stop losses or imbalances, right? Now, this imbalance would make sense because even though this technically isn't Asian session liquidity between those time frames, it's still a liquidity point. So in your head, if you're aiming to go lower, that there's still some kind of sell side liquidity. Any swing high and swing low has liquidity, it has a stop loss at some point. There's always gonna be people going long and going short, right? Now, initially, if you're trading the London Open strategy, which is two till five, or silver bullet, which is three to four in the morning, this is similar to my last video, exactly the same where you've got this trend line liquidity. Whenever I see this in my head, and the higher time frame is bearish, I anticipate that this is gonna get ran through and then we're gonna have a massive aggressive sell-off because it tricks people in both dimensions, right? So people going short here, they get taken out, their stop losses are taken out. Then people go long here and their stop losses are below these swing lows and that's also trend line liquidity and then we take that out as well. So it's pretty interesting how that all works out but that, that technically is trend line liquidity. Now, if you wanna wait, wait for one of these buy side liquidity points to be taken and here's your Asian session buy side, we take that out. Now, when do we take that out? We're within silver bullet hour, which is beautiful, right? You don't have to worry about London Open if you don't want to, like two to three, that first hour. You can trade silver bullet during London Open and as soon as that high gets taken out, let's go to replay and I'll just go back, zoom back in my charts. As soon as that high gets taken out, I'll go to a lower time frame. Now, you might not have access to lower time frames, so I'll talk about another way you can execute on this too, right? The way you could execute on this time frame is you could use still the Asian liquidity strategy. You could wait for a rate of liquidity, right? So this could be your strategy. You could go rate of Asian buy side. And right now I'm kind of building a model for you, which you can use and adapt, right? So that's step number one, you rate Asian buy side. Number two, wait for a market structure shift and enter after you get a rate of buy side and a market structure shift. That could be an entry model, just like this. Boom. Market structure shift occurs here. So let me change that there. And you enter, right, as soon as that candle closes below that swing low. So if I get rid of this text, just so you can see, on this candle, you'd enter. Stop loss above this previous swing high, one tick above, take profit, fixed one to two risk to reward. Very, very simple kind of strategy to use. Now, I'm not saying that's what I use, 
but you could do that if you don't have access to the smaller time frames, right? That could be a strategy in itself. So what I might do is I might just uh, put a bit of highlighter around this. That there could be a strategy, right? And it's the same for sell side. Now, another factor that would help you with this trade or with this idea is that we're bearish on a bigger time frame. So if you haven't seen my other video on London session that I recently posted, it goes for 20 minutes. I'll talk about how we're bearish on the NASDAQ or NQ futures. Another way you could enter this in the one minute, just quickly, see this big bullish gap from this candle's high to this candle's low, right? Once this candle closes below that, that becomes an inversion. So you could treat that as an inversion fair value gap. And as soon as this candle closes, you could also go short, right? There's many ways to enter trades, right? And your stop loss above this previous swing high because even if price returns to the inversion, you expect that to hold. Take profit, fixed one to two risk to reward, or sell side, whatever you want to do, right? So that's two ways already that we could enter this trade, right? And there's different entry models. So this here is one. The second would be the rate of Asian buy side, right? Market structure shift and an inversion fair value gap. Now you've got three confluences. So the more confluences you have, the higher the probability the trade is to work out. So that there could be another entry model or another entry technique you use, right? If you have access to small time frames, then I'd probably, as soon as we rate that liquidity, then I would look at like the 30 second, for example, or the 15 second. And what I'd look for now is any form of change in the state of delivery, right? So let me just play this out. Boom. Right there, we've got a change in the state of delivery. And all I mean by that is one, two, three, four, those four candles are the last four green candles before I move down. And they're also the candles that break this high or raid this high. They are an order block, right? Once this candle closes past those green candles there, that indicates a change in the state of delivery. So the change in the state of delivery happens right here. And that's the first sign that price may want to head lower. Again, we also got this, right? We've rated Asian buy side. So right here, we've taken Asian buy side liquidity. And we've also taken this internal liquidity. So is there any need for the price to go higher? No, because we've taken out the trend line liquidity, we've taken out Asian buy side, and we've had a reaction off Asian buy side. Notice how it's just the wick. It's just the wick that indicates it's a raid, right? That indicates it's a raid. If the bodies start to close past it aggressively, then it might just be another break of structure or shift to the upside, depending on how you want to class it, right? Everyone treats that differently. Now you could do this, you could go, okay, I'm gonna wait until price returns to this BPR or this bearish fair value gap. Does it have to though? We'll see, right? We do, right? Now that there could be your short. Right from here, stop loss above this swing high. And where was your target? Well, fix one to two. And this is executing off the 30 second time frame as well, right? So you can see here, fix one to two, beautiful. As soon as one to one's hit, you move your stop loss to break even and then you're good to go, right? So if you have access to smaller time frames, this is how I'd frame a trade. As soon as you take out that Asian buy side, right? As soon as those swing highs or swing lows are taken out, then switch to a smaller time frame. Look for a change in the state of delivery and then you can execute off a fair value gap. If you didn't want to do that, you could wait for a market structure shift here. And you could do the same as you did in the one minute. That could be your market structure shift. And we'll just change that to the center. And then what you could do is wait for a retracement. Now, see this green candle here? You could enter off this bearish gap here, right? As well. You could enter off that bearish gap. So you could go short. Stop loss above this previous swing high. You could even go here if you wanted to manage your risk and you wanted to be very cautious. And let's see what would happen if you do like a fixed one to two risk to reward. Price comes up a little bit, but ultimately, right, you take that profit. So there's many ways to enter a trade. That's all I'm trying to illustrate here. I don't want you to get confused. I want you to pick one. If you're still new or you're still starting, pick one and stick to one. And then as you kind of build confidence, you can increase your, your basis of how you can execute trades and how you can enter trades, right? So you can enter off this bearish gap this green candle taps into these three green candles here. That's an order block. Last three green candles before a shift in structure. So you could enter off that order block. 
or you can enter up here. Like there's, there's many, many ways you can enter, right? So that's on a 30 second time frame. And in terms of time elapsed, say you entered from here to your take profit, right? You enter at 325, your TP is at 340. It's only a 20 minute trade, which is what I talk about a lot of the time is that the trades I take, they're not long trades. This is what it looks like on the minute, right? So obviously on the 30 second, you don't get that, but there's different ways to enter and both are still valid and both are still you know plausible. So let's play this out and let's talk about what happens with price now. Again, you target one side of liquidity, buy side, and then you target sell side. And then we had this imbalance here that we want to fill, right? Overall in a higher time frame, we're also bearish, right? So that would lead us to believe that price is going to head lower. This trade is a silver bullet trade, which is completely fine, right? The way I see it, because I think some people have asked me as well, like how do you know it's not going to keep going up? Well, there's a couple ways. The market needs to take liquidity, right? And once it's taken a lot of liquidity, often it rebalances in the other direction because the market moves from discount to premium, right? We're bearish on a higher time frame here. So any run up, I'll treat as suspect. So any run up, I'll treat as just trying to take liquidity. That's important and then reverse. So this run up, we take this important trend on liquidity and the buy side liquidity here, just with a wick. And that's also important. Then we rebalance lower and we have a clear market structure shift. If that wasn't clear enough for you and you're worried about this bullish gap, which is fair enough, when the price closes right here, that could have been your opportunity to enter, right? And you could have gone short right here. Now, depending on how you want to treat it, you could have done a really risky stop loss here, right? If you believe that the market is just going to completely sell off and your one to two would be hit right here, which is sell side liquidity. So there's many ways to enter trades and there's many ways to frame it. This just illustrates one method um, that you can use. And it's an extension of the Asian liquidity strategy. So waiting for a swing higher in this case to get taken out, then waiting for an entry model that suits you. And again, I've talked about probably like four different entry models that you can use depending on what time frame you have. So my advice, wait for the rate of liquidity because that's the important aspect. The entry model is up to you because again, you could enter as soon as this buy side's taken, right? And let's, let's actually just talk, let's just write this out. Let's write out some entry models, right? Some different entry models or techniques as an extension of the um, the Asian liquidity. So entry models, right? Let's make this a little bit bigger. First entry model, Asian buy side is swept, enter. Right? Maybe you have a 10 pip or 10 handle stop loss. That's the first entry model. The second is uh, wait for a market structure shift and enter when candle closes. The third is wait for a bullish bear valley gap to get inversed, enter on candle close. The fourth is 30 second chart, change in the state of delivery, enter with stop above previous height. The fourth is the 30 second chart, change in the state of delivery, market structure shift, and inversion fair value gap. So here it's just to illustrate, right, that the entry, I guess, technique is different to what you're looking for. So what you're looking for is liquidity to be taken. How you execute based on that is based on your trading style and strategy because some people might want more confirmations, other people might be more confident and more happy to execute like on the 30 second. Like for example, personally, I like to see multiple confirmations. So for me personally, I would like to see that taken, like that respected, and the shift in structure, and then I'd probably enter here. That's what I personally do, because the more confluences that you have, the higher probability that it is. But by all means, you could enter a position here, a position here, a position here, and that's called pyramiding, right? And technically, if you look at this move, all this is trend line, it's all trend line liquidity, right? Because price is bouncing off this point, bouncing off this point. So similar to the move up, this is now a target and this is now trend on liquidity. You can see how we absolutely sell through that. It's called a low resistance liquidity run because it forms trend on liquidity and you can see how we aggressively move past that. So here's just another video extending on my London session strategy, um, which is not mine technically, but these are just a range of ways that you can enter. And this is a strategy that I employ myself, right? So it's one of the easiest because you can wait, right? You gotta be patient you wait for things to happen, 
you wait for liquidity to be taken and then you choose. This is what I like about it. You choose how you enter, right? The easiest way to enter is wait for a market structure shift and a return to an imbalance. That's the easiest way to enter, right? Easiest way to enter. Um, but as you start getting more experience, then you can play around with smaller charts and you can also play around with inversions, BPRs, right? All that kind of thing. So hope that kind of helps. Um, I'll make one more video, two more videos for London session because there are some other things that are important. Um, not just the rate of Asian liquidity and we'll talk about that when it actually pops up in the charts.